saw this tweet from Mary Kay Cabot, wanted to put it out there. You talked about Nick Chubb as your top five uh, comeback player of the year players. Yep. Obviously coming mm-hmm. back from that devastating uh, knee injury from last season. She said, just watch Nick Chubb running full sprints after practice, cutting with tremendous agility. It. it was remarkable. We weren't Love allowed it. to film it. But Jimmy okay. Haslam, uh, Brown's owner, watched the whole thing and looked very pleased. The Cleveland Browns are now right in the thick of training camp. They headed home from West Virginia, and according to many inside sources, Deshaun Watson is off to a hot start. And while I don't want to overreact because I know in-game performance is the only thing that matters, it's still a good thing to hear. Expectations for this team are still all over the place as we start to get closer and closer to week one kickoff. And I just want to talk about everything that's been going on with this team over the past week or so. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes five seconds plus you can always change your mind we are on the road to 40k subscribers and with your support i believe we can get there super fast all right so starting off with what's been going on at training camp while deshaun watson's return from major shoulder surgery dominates the browns quarterback headlines it's dorian thompson robinson who's been making the most impressive throws during the team's training camp the second year quarterback has consistently displayed timing and accuracy in his passes outshining even watson in recent practices which has been pretty incredible to see but don't get me wrong Watson has been pretty solid overall and is starting to get into a rhythm with some of the receivers at a rapid pace. But this development adds an intriguing subplot to the Browns quarterback situation. While Watson's recovery and return to the field remain the primary focus of the team's season, DTR's strong showing suggests he could be a valuable asset for the Browns offense. It was about a year ago at this time when we were all raving about what Thompson Robinson did during the Hall of Fame game and the momentum started to build for the UCLA product, culminating in him winning the backup job after the Browns traded away Josh Dobbs. So that's what's been up with DTR, but let's take a deeper dive into Deshaun Watson. This is what Kevin Stefanski had to say. He's done a nice job throughout the days that he's throwing. I thought he was doing really well. He's focused and locked in, Stefanski said of Watson's off day. Even today, proud of him for being in the huddle, giving coaching points. I think that's a huge part of this as the starting quarterback. Is even on a day like this where you get an off day from throwing, it's not an off day from a leadership perspective. And he did a nice job. The off day is simply a part of the Browns' continued cautious approach to getting the former first round pick ready for the upcoming season. Watson has been a full participant for the Browns since training camp kicked off, which is a contrast from the offseason program where he was only throwing on an every other day schedule. They don't want to overdo it. He's being diligent about what we're asking him to do, Stefanski said. Give him a day off today, he probably would have thrown if we let him, but just staying true to what the plan is here with the medical team. Training camp has marked the ending of a big offseason for Watson. After his first two years in Cleveland didn't go to plan, as he only saw the field in 12 games due to a suspension and injury, he is now entering a season that some has described as make or break. With the Browns' aspirations of making a deep playoff run this coming season, they will not only need Watson healthy, but also, they want him at his best. Moving on from that, let's talk about Nick Chubb and his first ACL in the middle of November. Cleveland fans hoped Chubb would play at some point in 2024. Instead, we saw the physical marvel squatting big weights before Browns training camp, then during camp. Despite saying he fell behind, came reports of Chubb running and cutting. And now comes a report from Mary Kay that at some point in this camp, Chubb will be activated. The Browns return to the comfortable confines of their Berea training facilities for the remainder of training camp with the first practice back on Sunday. Given the reports on Chubb's work and Mary Kay's report, Cleveland's offense could be whole very shortly. And an even crazier thing I've been seeing that could be straight brain rot, but just makes you think, is that the Browns are now front runners for Brandon IU. This is what an article I read on Heavy.com said. Ayuk recently requested a trade and is seeking a new deal from the 49ers. Ayuk has reported for camp, but has not been practicing. He's coming off a season in which he caught 75 passes for 1,342 yards and 7 touchdowns. Ayuk was a first round pick in 2020 and will make $14 million next season with the 49ers on his fifth year option. There's been some buzz around the Browns and Ayuk for a solid chunk of the offseason. Most of it has been relatively unfounded, but notable beat reporters like Mary Mary Kay have addressed the trade rumor. She likes the idea of swapping 30-year-old Amari Cooper for Ayuk, but also noted it's unlikely to happen. Honestly, I don't even know why I even just said all that, because outside of actual facts, anything Mary Kay reports on that's like a rumor or anything like that automatically has an over 99% chance of being false. But she actually wasn't the only one. Cam Marino of NFL Draft Buzz has the latest link between the Browns and Ayuk. He named the Browns and the New England Patriots as the top suitors. As a personal fan of this team, in terms of like a chance to make it to the Super Bowl, Amari Cooper has to be on this team. 
and there's no if, ands, or buts about it. And I think him alongside Jerry Judy and then David Njoku at tight end could form a top 10 receiving unit in the league if Watson performs at a high level. Now moving away from the team and talking a little about some of the recent news about the stadium and their potential move to Brook Park, the day before Mayor Justin Bibb publicly released Cleveland's latest proposal to the Browns for renovating the existing stadium on the lakefront, a contribution of $461 million to the $1 billion plus dollar project, a contribution of $461 million to the $1 billion plus project, and asked the Haslam's to respond by August 12th. The team welcomed officials from Brook Park for a series of meetings at Browns headquarters in Berea. Starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, roughly a dozen officials from the suburb convened in a series of small groups in a conference room at 76 Lou Graza Boulevard, itching to entertain the Haslam Sports Group's plan for the future of Cleveland Brown Stadium a few miles south of Cleveland. By 4 p.m. that day, many had walked away with an answer crystal clear from their point of view. The Haslams are all but likely to pursue that 176 acres of land in Brook Park and a new dome over renovating the current stadium on the lakefront. It's definitely an interesting story that is starting to develop, but I know that all Browns fans really want the stadium to be on the lake, including myself. But in terms of practicality, it would make sense to have the dome because outside of football, you could actually use the place more than 15 times a year. But let me know what you guys are thinking. One last thing I want to talk about before I end off this video is what's been going on with the Browns defense as of late. In the final practice in West Virginia, as I said, Watson wasn't throwing, but Martin Emerson and Denzel Ward both made a few good plays knocking the ball away from the receivers at all parts of the field. Ward had an interception at one point too. And all in all, things have just been going good for the defense, and they all trust each other, and things are of course way easier running it back with the same coordinator, which is something Cleveland hasn't got to do in quite a while. This is what the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show had to say. I'm really encouraged because last year at this time, we weren't seeing the same type of snap, same type of zip out of Watson, and this year, he's been playing loose, and as for the defense, they were dominant. Even when Watson had the day off, the defense said, hey, we're not gonna take the day off. They were swarming to the ball and just making things tough and bringing that intensity that winning teams need to have. That's really all I have to say for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you agreed with and what you disagreed with. And also, if you enjoyed, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean the world. And until next time, I will see you all later.